welcome to this NBC4 digital special, Community Conversation. I'm Kerry Charles. This time we are focusing on a book. It's not just any book. It's called Art Activism Action. It features a number of local artists and preserves their works that were on display during the 2020 protest in downtown Columbus. I sat with a group, the book's editor, and some of the featured artists. We talked about their individual contributions, what art does for them, working on the streets as protests played out around them, and that no matter the medium, art can be used in the fight for social justice. Our conversation started with me asking the editor to further explain the concept behind the book. So, Art Activism Action. Um, we were tasked with taking all of the mural artwork um, that was created during the 2020 protests and figuring out a way to memorialize it in some sort of way. Um, and so we came up with this idea for this um, art book, but we wanted it to have presence, we wanted it to be big and bold to reflect what the artwork was like being created in that time. And so that's what you have there. Uh, my name is Donna Marbury. I'm account director at Warhol and Wall Street, and I was editor of Art Activism Action, the book. Um, it's a collection of visual art, there's some QR codes, there's stories. So I think it really captures everything that was happening in 2020. I know you're the editor, but when you look at this, you have to be kind of in awe of the product. When you look at it, you think and feel what? I feel like it's a reflection of Columbus and the art community here. Um, the art community is so strong. Um, and a lot of times people pick up the book and they're like, is this in Columbus? And it's like, yes, like this was probably the biggest display of public art that I've ever seen. And it happened in Columbus. So just the fact that we're able to capture that, it makes me really proud yeah. of our community. I know, I know this may not seem like a big deal to you, Paul, but when you, when you look at this picture, what do you think? I just remember everybody that was coming out that day. That was, I think, the first week or two. My name is Paul Becker, and I do protest photography primarily in central Ohio, uh, the White Coats for Black Lives um, group of people from the medical profession that came out. And just all the different groups, I just think about all the other groups that came out during the whole summer, um, these individual groups that were showing unity and coming out in support. So and it just kind of reminds me of that. So did you provide um, a bunch of photos or did you say, I, I, have a, I have several photos that you want to consider, especially this one? I had hundreds available and I think they just went through those and picked the ones that they wanted to use for the book. And then when you took, if you um, remember, when you took this photo, did you know that it would have kind of the strength, the, you know, a story that comes through it? Because this is, I mean, this is a powerful picture. When I do all my photos, I want to tell the story of the event. And that's kind of what I'm thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's not until I think later when I go through them and I'm deciding which ones I'm going to process, which ones I'm going to make available. Because I was probably taking 800, 900 photos a day. Mm -hmm. And then maybe 80 or 90 I would choose. And all I want to do is try to capture what I think is our defining moments, what's happening, and try to get a representation to tell the story of what was going on. So when you finally saw it in the book, did you look at it and go, yeah, I'm bad? <laughs> I, I, I did, I did it that. It looked too good. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great. I saw you shaking your head as he was talking. What, what was going through your mind? It's just very powerful. It's very beautiful. I come from a family that is all nurses and works in the field. So. Hi, I'm Brianna Rhodes, and I am a dancer and poet that was featured in the book. Powering to just see so many people just come together for one cause to just share awareness. It's just like it's not just a select group of people that are like upset or bothered by something. It's a collective of many different spaces that are like, no, this is wrong, and we're gonna show representation for it. Sometimes in most spaces, especially black bodies, don't feel represented by those white coats. So to see that they stand with the black bodies that were taken, it's a big message. How does that fall into what you do and how you represent it in the book? 
I'm one of those artists that I'm not a frontliner. I I commend those that can, that can be up in the front, up in the police's faces, and saying what needs to be said, staying out long, you know, doing what they got to do. But I always commended the fact that what I am and what I do as an artist helps prolong it once people stop paying attention to what they're doing out on the streets. And I know that when I was overwhelmed with a lot that day, I. I was at the time they were doing those verses on Instagram mm -hmm. and Kurt Franklin and my God, the name just left me, but they were doing all of the like Christian songs that I grew up with and I was just like in tears and I was like, I feel like I need to say something, but I don't have enough in me to go out and just walk. And I wrote this poem called Colorless and it probably took me 20 minutes to write it because it was just all in here. And most of the time I feel like I need to move, but I felt paralyzed to move and I only feel like I was able to speak. Mm -hmm. So I wrote everything out and I was like, I wanna do something with this and I made some movement to it and next thing I know, that was also when I was working with Warhol Wall Street at the time and they happened to create something over on the west side for a giant church and we put all these black moments up on it and I was like, I'm gonna use colorless and put it up here. I had no idea it was going to be in a book, let alone be able to speak as long as it does, but I think that's the beauty of mm -hmm. art that has just, it just comes from the heart and has one purpose, and it's just to bleed, just bleed your emotions out. You kind of talked about this, but what did you think when you saw the final product? I cried. <laughs> I, uh, Donna had showed me a little snippet during the summer at the Lincoln Theater because I was a teacher and her son was there, and I was just like, this is what you got. This is what you decided to do. I was just like, that's me. Like, you know, sometimes when you get pictures done, you don't. You, I guess you don't look at yourself like. Yeah, I mean, you'd be like, yeah, that's the bomb. But you know, sometimes you don't think people see that also. And I thought I was just getting a headshot done, and I ended up getting a couple photos. But to see it just collectively in that line, I was like, oh wow. <laughs> just, but your your dance is also featured. Yes, right? it's yeah, in the so QR you come code. To life, so it's not just the, the picture. Yeah, yeah, I do come to life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Duarte, when you uh, when you saw the final product, what did you think? Yeah, I was impressed with the quality of the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Richard Duarte Brown, I was a mural painter. That's my part in the book. And you've seen a lot of art during your day. What was so impressive about this production? Uh, the documentation of, of the movement or the experience because, you know, you, living here long enough, you see a lot of people like 2020, Walt Neal died, 2020, Pierce West died. These are a professor in the college and one that painted murals on his walls and many of his walls were just, walls were just covered up, period. So it's like I had this bittersweet idea of doing these murals and then being honored of these in this book, and those guys kind of not, not a part of the whole thing. So it's kind of had this other kind of relationship with the thought of people that were already here that weren't included or not known. So it's, I mean, so I have this kind of, I don't know, bittersweet thing about the people that went before us that are not included that we don't see. Yeah. You know what I'm just saying? It's kind of, but I'm glad to be there. I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, in 2020, after the murder of George Floyd, uh, we stepped in um, to try and support artists in their action and in their voices um, and their protests um, about the, in, the ongoing injustice against people of color in this community and across the country and the world. Jamie Goldstein, Vice President of Marketing for the Greater Columbus Arts Council. We helped pay artists who painted murals throughout downtown and almost immediately people started asking us what happens when they come down. Where are they going? And we felt um, as the Local Arts Council that it was our responsibility to, um, to record this moment in time and use it to help us be better and to keep the conversation going into the future. So we took professional photographs of all of them, we stored them, we did exhibitions around the community for almost two years. So the boards went back up in the form of cubes in Worthington and on Ohio State's campus and at Denison and uh, over in the King Lincoln District as we go into the future. We've gifted most of these out into the community. Uh, so we, uh, to um, Columbus Public Schools, high schools, to um, the Columbus Metropolitan Library branches, uh, to the artists who appear in the book, and to many of our community partners. Uh, we, felt, we feel that this is um, a tool that we hope will continue the dialogue and make sure that we keep working to, to fight for social justice.
these artists represent so many people. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Once again, like the art community here in Columbus is amazing. It's expansive. It covers all sorts of genres. Um, and it's more than just aesthetic. I think a lot of people experience art for its beauty. It's pretty. It looks nice. You can put it in your house, whatnot. Mm -hmm. This is social justice. Like this is activism. It's saying something important. It's pointed. Um, and there's a direct line of change that comes with it. And I think it's a whole nother way to experience art. Um, outside of its like aesthetic on the outside, it's literally asking for social justice. It's literally asking for healthcare rights. It's literally asking the police to change their policy. And so if it can help people to look at art in a new way as a actionable um, thing rather than just a pretty thing, I think like that would make me feel good. Um, and I think that speaks to the artist community um, that's doing more than just making art because they like to make art. <laughs> um, it's, they're making art because they want to make change and this is their way of speaking for those who can't speak um, and making it more direct than just a piece of legislation. Like this is in your face, it's in our community. So um, I hope the book you know, highlights that and shows that art is just more than just something pretty. Perfect. I think it's a great conversation starter. Yeah. It, it's, it's significant to have a record of, you know, we have to make our own history and tell our own history because a lot of it's, you know, we're not included in canons and stuff like that. So it's, I have a, a desperate need to keep alive stories of people that really paved the way. And we talk about ancestors that um, we stand on the shoulders of. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of this, um, need to mm, talk about the people that that aren't here sometimes you know what I mean mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's an honor to be here and being in there makes me think about them more so it's it's kind of a you know one of those kind of things for me um, you know the artists featured in this book stand on the shoulders of so many artists and activists who lived in Columbus and I think in 2020 we were able to see that because we had social media it was all over the national news mm -hmm. um, of the protests that were happening here, but th it certainly wasn't the first time that artists stood in the front of social injustice. Yeah. Um, it's just the first time I think the whole city was able to see it on such a large scale. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the artists were out. One of the central questions of this book was, what made you leave your couch to go down, downtown and take photos or paint mm -hmm. because like Brianna said like I was at home <laughs> you know it was very tumultuous yeah. um, not only because of the protests I mean but this was in the height of COVID as well so a lot was happening uh, but artists got off their you know couch and went downtown and put their bodies on the line mm -hmm. as activists um, and that's a very important piece um, that's not new um, but um, I think the community was able to see that on such a large scale for the first time. Mm -hmm. Paul, is this one of yours? Yes, I think so. The, um, it was um, when I sent the email, one of the things that you said was you didn't want to take the space from uh, of someone black who could be sitting at the table. I don't have a table, but mm -hmm. um, there has to be a different lens that you have Oh, that was good. Different lens. <laughs> when you are um, at a protest, because I imagine, are you invisible? How, how, how do you show up? What, what is it like being in the mix of everything taking place? Well, I think I'm coming from a, also a position of privilege as well, mm -hmm. that especially with police and other individuals of power, they're going to view me differently. Um, and some of them viewed as part of the media. That also comes with privilege that when the curfews were in effect, media were exempt. Um, so I do think about those things when I'm out there, but I try to get just caught up in, as I said before, just capturing what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I also look for cues from people. If you see somebody that is trying to avoid a camera, you know, move away from them. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really ask permission when there's 2,000 people in the streets, but I try to make sure they see the cameras 
Um, I'm walking around beforehand, and I'm pretty open and accessible so people can come and talk to me if they do have questions. I have cards if they want to contact me later. Mm. Why, um, <clears throat> why do you feel it's your responsibility to help hold close these moments that are happening in our community? I think it's important for all the hard work the organizers are doing, the other activists. Mm -hmm. I want there to be documentation. Um, so during the 2020 protest, I wanted people to see what, how Central Ohio responded. And I knew there'd be other, there's lots of other photographers and media uh, that were documenting as well. And I just wanted to hopefully take my vision and have that perspective where people can look back and see how Central Ohio responded. Um, Brianna, how has, um, how has or how did 2020 change you? Uh, it was hard. Um, from a spiritual standpoint and just my artistry, um, with COVID hitting and everything coming to an absolute halt, I had previously just graduated college. I was trying to figure myself out and there was a lot of figuring myself out. Um, I felt alone. I felt very scared. I felt very, uh, just very heightened sense of awareness that I didn't know what to do with. Um, but then one thing I just knew I wanted to do was just be an artist. Um, because COVID and because of everything that was happening stopped a lot, you, a lot of people had to question their own value. A lot of people succumbed to that answer and just basically ended up doing what they needed to do and to survive. And I just told myself I didn't want to survive. I wanted to be proud of who I was and what I was doing. And I didn't care how I got to do it. I just was going to make, I was going to create, and I was going to be happy to do it. Um, 2020 was rough. <laughs> I think a lot of people can say that. But in, on the flip side, it was also strangely peaceful to have the world stop and value the most probably looked over part of the country. Art is not usually placed on a high pedestal unless it has a lot of dollars behind it. Um, so for everybody to stop and literally rely on entertainment, rely on artists, to literally get through the hard day today at that time, you know, it was nice to feel valued as an artist. It was nice for people to go out of their way to have a Zoom meeting so we could schedule some art poet thing or teach a workshop or have all the festivals be online or have something across the country. Like people actually was taking the time to listen to artists. And you were able to kind of express that within your piece. What about you, 2020? Uh, it was, uh, mostly I thought about the kids that, you know, we knew. I work with kids and, I, and a lot of them have been afraid of the cops and, and my focus was to paint people that were, that, that look for the goal, the outcome, mm -hmm. was to see the kids, you know, not being afraid of living or being stopped by a cop. And a lot of them that were graduating that year, they were fresh on my mind. So they were the subject of the murals and when people would walk up they would look at the picture right away, think, oh, when did he die and when did they die? And it was like, you know, when you, you're working around people that, um, when, you, when you're in a high death population rate of working with teens or people that, you know, get killed or die, you're not always focusing on the death, you're focused on some way to live, you know, find what's the goal. The goal of the whole thing was to see people live, to see people feel like to come to some resolve. And so that's kind of where I was at. And so one of the kids that I painted that's in the book, which I'm so honored that he's in there. And, and I was going to give him the sec, they gave us a, a book too. So I was going to give him my book and let him know about it and uh, or his mom. And um, he felt it was so great to be a part of the whole movement for his people. That right there, just the, the way the kids themselves that were living felt about being included in the mural because um, many times I'll take a student and paint their future, like in a sense of prophetic utterance, like affirmation, like many times, like if in my own life, when they say you can be an artist, I would ask the person, what do you dream to be? And so it's this perpetual um, drawing out and affirmation of someone. So the kid that's in there, um, he's in his third year of college now, so, and, and he put the stuff and shared it. And so it's, it's very meaningful to see it happen in time for 
something so significant. Like Donna said, this was one of the most loudest statements in our city where everything to come. And, and, and like she said, a sense of peace was there because you walked out there, you didn't realize you're painting over boards with broken glass. And at five o'clock, you watched all the people that were supporting leave the streets. Then you hear people walking up and down the street, you know, chanting and then coming closer. Very emotional because I looked in the faces of not just black people. I've seen all different kind of people, all different walks of life. You know, with the, with, not everybody was out. Some people were wild. Some people were like, you know, cause, you know, cause ready. Some people took advantage of the circumstance because people are human, period. But you've seen people that you know were pure with tears in their eyes, like walking with a desire to see some kind of justice be done. So that part of it was where I'm at for it all. Like it just, um, it has a lot of motion tied to it. So it's kind of hard not, you know, I'm, you know, we're moved by our feelings. So it's kind of hard not to speak about this stuff without recalling and feeling all that emotion. It's just so much emotion. And at one point, um, I think some things got wild and my son was worried about me, you know, if I was okay out there. Cause um, sometimes I, I think I'll just respond inside my spirit and do something and not look at the danger. And I, I think often if I overthink or think too much, I won't move forward. So mm -hmm. I didn't have time to really think. I didn't have time to really get what was going on. So it was like you didn't catch it until all of a sudden you caught it. You know what I mean? And, and I think some people that got into the frenzy of, you know, I got to see it from so many sides with so many different young people. Some people look for the excitement of being in some raw thing. Um, and they were out screaming and looking at the windows being broken. And one of the girls that I know, it won't say names and stuff, but after she's, you hear her recording everything and saying, yeah, this is, we're gonna get even, you know, doing all the you know, rowdy side. But then the next day, she was emotionally beat. She didn't want to talk about none of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it doesn't hit you till it hits you. I think it's a range of things that you feel sure. when you're like in the middle of something that's so uprooting. And when I paint, it's like I'm processing and then I get answers and clarity comes. But if you comfort somebody in the middle of the mess or the middle of the pain, that is the biggest hope that I want for me. So what do you, what do you think when you look at this yeah. right now? Uh, every time I see him, we, it's just a sense of pride. It's just, it's honor that that was included. Um, Paul, what about you? How did 2020 change your life, affect your life? Again, coming from a different position, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not at risk, and my family's not at risk the way other people are. So, but being out there and seeing the way police responded to a lot of the protesters, um, it makes me a lot more cautious when I'm out there. I'm a little bit more aware, because um, even sometimes the media was being targeted, mm -hmm. um, and it just and following up with other people across the country, you know, communicating with other photographers and other media, and having the same experience. Um, it does make me more aware out there that I have to be careful. Um, I'm not always paying attention what's happening when I am out there. Um, I know somebody posted some police body cam video online, and I was watching one of them, and it was the Father's Day at the State House, and a line of protesters, line of police, and I'm walking in between them with my camera, mm -hmm. and there's no one else around us. <laughs> and I didn't realize that I had gotten kind of that much into the middle of things until I saw it. Um, so I just kind of look back and try to keep safe because, again, I want to continue to document what's happening. 2020. <laughs> How did it affect me, change me? Um, so I have a eight-year-old son, a black son, mm -hmm. um, and I often think about, um, you know, he's cute, so that he's cute to me. Um, but at some point, he's going to be dangerous to someone. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, inherently is scary to me as a mother. Um, there's so many mothers and fathers and family members who were protesting on behalf of their loved one um, because of a fluke accident, because of a 10 second situation. Um, and that has, that stays on the top of everything I do. Um, so I think the year made me a little more intentional about the stories I want to tell mm -hmm. and the things I want to be a part of and the legacy that I want my son to know of who I am and um, what he grew up in. Um, he spent 2020 at home on Zoom, um, but when he becomes an adult, <laughs> 
he'll have a better understanding of what he actually lived through. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some of his peers didn't make it for whatever reason. Mm. Um, and so I just want, you know, him to remember what 2020 was like for him um, as he grows up. Um, so I just want to be more intentional. I think, um, you know, we all seen different corporations, different organizations taking certain stands of diversity, social justice. And I think um, in the position I'm in, I'm able to hold them to the carpet to say, hey, three years ago, we were all about diversity. We were all about inclusion. Um, let's keep that going. Um, so yeah, just being more intentional with the stories I tell and yeah. what I want, you know, the people I can rise up and, and bring their stories to life. I always say, let's not make it a uh, stonewashed jeans. Stonewashed yes. jeans came in and then they went. Like, like we'll keep yes. talking about it. The, what's the, the one thing you want people in Columbus to know about this book, this product, this gift to the community? You know, I went to the Underground Railroad and uh, this might show my ignorance or something. And I found out that Harriet Beecher Stowe was a white woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, um, true to the cause, there's always been humanity, the hand of humanity is bigger than, it's always the deeper heart of humanity. You find, you're surprised at the end that it's not, it's everybody has a hand in helping everybody, is what I'm saying. So when we see a white brother over here, he's a white brother over here who stood for justice like the other brothers do, and that's the whole thing. It always pushes us to love more, or love better. So it's like, I think that's what you always take away, that, that when we're pushed to the place of, of being treated so bad, other people always rise up because it's our human nature to do that, you know, bigger than, you know what I mean? Uh, when we speak for black causes, we speak against white people. When, do, do you, it's almost like, it's almost, it's inferred that I don't, we don't care about, I have a white dad and a black mom who, who didn't even tell me they were my parents. So it's kind of like, I've always looked at both sides of everything and it's just kind of like, um, I'm, that part of it fascinates me. Yeah. That, that part right there. I always say being pro-black doesn't mean anti-white. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. Well, what do you hope that people know, take away from, from this product? That it's ever giving. It just mm. will constantly give. It's, it will constantly give representation. It will constantly be relevant. It will constantly be a showcase of what's here in Columbus. It will constantly show those who are not here. It will constantly, I always say that my art is always speaking for those who can't speak for themselves, right? If they're actually gone or just literally can't speak for those or, or kids, because I teach a quite array of kids from many different walks of life. So when I'm creating those work, I'm like, yeah, I might be young and I might be scared too, but there are kids that are even more scared all the time that I'm here reminding you that who you are as an individual matters. And if that book can remind them that you matter, it will constantly remind them that they matter, that the people that they look up to, and as it continues to roll down, it's just a, con it's a constant gift. Mm -hmm. cool. I think that there are a lot of ways to participate or contribute to a movement. You may not be comfortable public speaking for different reasons and maybe you can't be out on the street, but you can write down what you're feeling, you can paint, you can take a photo. Uh, there are a lot of ways that you can contribute to a movement besides being on the front line, being visible. Well, talk about what it was like trying to produce a mural with chaos going behind you, whether that's chaos, uh, because, and I'm talking about the outliers who are being destructive, what, what was that like? Um, I don't know, I had a strange sense of, um, uh, just, I, I kept watching myself and looking around and everything seemed safe and we looked out for each other, but then we knew when at a certain time it wasn't good to be out, mm -hmm. you know, at all, just, it was wild, like, like more like people were just looking for opportunity to do something wild. And it wasn't about it wasn't about the cause we were about. It was about just busting up windows and mm -hmm. doing some stuff and calling people and stuff like that. And mm. some other stuff going on too. Mm. So um, you know, you know, you hide from that. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, 
you've seen different waves of this in 57 years, but this one was different, is, would you say? It was every day, mm -hmm. ongoing for weeks and weeks. And that's something you usually don't see. Um, you know, sometimes there were 3,000, sometimes there was 20. Mm -hmm. um, but there was always someone downtown, usually at the State House or City Hall, and just how it just continued. And um, a lot of the, it was different people. You know, the one time when you go down one day and there'd be one group, and another day there'd be a different group. So I think just the way that it continued and went through for pretty much the whole summer. The Greater Columbus Arts Council has more information on where art activism action can be purchased. Thanks for watching. I'm Carrie Charles.